Today on the table, we're gonna be building the Coyote Drop Termination Closure, or the DTC, for flat drop repair. Okay, so we're gonna start with the kit contents. Here on the table, I have a COI DTC-001. Now this kit is for flat drop cables or small round cables. Um, so just make sure you have the right kit going into your application. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the bag. And what I should get is this package here. So on the back side, I've got my application instructions. So I can take those off, put those to the side, and then the base and cover are rubber banded together. So I'm gonna take the cover off, and inside is my small parts bag. That includes uh, my grommets, my cable restraint, all of that. Now, if you notice on the cover here, um, it is a little bit there's some lubricant applied to the cover at the factory. It kind of saves time in the field um, for emergency repair applications and just saves time overall. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to keep this as clean as possible during the installation of the cable. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. So I've got my bag here and then I've got um, my base. So on the base, I've got four uh, grommet ports. I've got two on the bottom two on the top, um, depending on how you're looking at it. I've got two ports here that are already open at the factory. So I've got one on this side and one on the same side of the closure that's open. Now if you notice on this side, these two are closed. So if you had cables trying to come in and go out in an inline application, you'd have to open this port. Um, so I've also got two splice block locations here, right in the middle um, to use with my splice blocks. I've also got two mounting locations at the top and the bottom of the base to secure it to a pole, or you can band it to a pole or ha what have you with those locations. All right, so usually what I do before I get my cable ready and install in the closures, I'm gonna go ahead and get the base ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and install my splice blocks here. So I'm gonna open my small parts bag. And in my small parts bag, um, I've got four grommets. Now these grommets are for small round cables as well as flat drop. Now flat drop does have an oval profile, so this round hole is actually correct. Um, so I've got four of those. I've got two plugs for my grommets. I've got my flat drop retention clips here. We've got some silicone lubricant in case the cover um, gets dry or when I install my grommets, they also need to be lubricated. Um, I've got my two splice blocks here. So the yellow blocks are for single fusion. Um, it holds eight single fusion splices in one block so that I can get up to 16 single fusion splices in the closure overall. So. Those two come in there. And then I've got this purple block here. Um, this is for mass fusion or ribbon splices. It will hold three of those to get up to 36 count mass fusion. So I'm gonna be using flat drop today, um, which is gonna be a single fusion splice. So I'm gonna keep this for use in a, either another closure or um, somewhere else. So put that off to the side. Um, I've got these screws. So these screws are used to hold down Airman yard and some of your smaller drop cables. Um, we're not gonna use these today because I'm dealing with flat drop. And then I've got my fiber um, storage clips here. So if you look at the base here, um, we've got the top and the bottom. There's these slots right here um, that these clips will go into. So I'm gonna go ahead and push those in. Now this just keeps the fiber um, in this radius here, just to, or this diameter of the closure, kind of keeps them in inside the closure. Um, so I'm gonna take my single fusion splice blocks, these are the yellow ones, and I'm gonna push them in. So what I typically do is I'll just come in from the side and put them in, just like that. Um, what I can also do, instead of pushing them in from the side, is you can kind of just push them into the channel, okay? So once I've got that done, um, I just need to 
prop my cable to put in the closure. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this stuff off to the side and I'm gonna grab my cable. So I've got a flat drop cable here. Um, so we're gonna be using just 12 fiber flat drop. Now, the one good thing about the um, DTC closure is it can be used in the case of an emergency repair. So if you had your flat drop buried in the ground and you had somebody that uh, accidentally, you know, was digging a new fence post and they forgot to call to make sure that there were no fiber cables in the way or if there was any kind of um, damage to your drop cable, you can use this just to kind of get the connection um, back up and running as quick as possible. Um, it can also be used as a permanent drop location as well. So in this application today, we're gonna be treating this as my cable was cut. So I'm gonna have to open my cable. So let's say that this was my cut end here. I'm gonna measure 42 inches and that's where I'm gonna open my cable to. Okay, so I've got this lined up. So at the 42 inch mark, which is right here, I'm going to mark my drop cable right there. And that is where I'm going to remove the cable jacket for any damaged cables that need to go into my DTC. So I've got one already opened. So here's my drop cable. I just went ahead and removed the um, cable jacket. And so I've got my buffer tube with my 12 fibers in it right here. And then I've got my two strength members on the outer sides right here. So before I put this in the closure, I'm gonna have to go ahead and trim my strength members. So because we're using flat drop, the strength members are embedded in the jacket. That means that I can cut them as close to the sheath opening as I can get. So what I typically do here is I'll kind of pull them off at an angle, kind of like that, and then I'll try to get them as close as possible. So it's probably around a quarter of an inch from the sheath opening if I can get it. So there's one side. I'm going to do the same with the other side. So just kind of pull it away from my buffer tube. Okay, That one was a little bit longer, but that's okay. So now what I've got is I've got my flat drop cable open. The strength members are trimmed and now I just have to open my buffer tube. So when I go to open my buffer tube, I want to open it around a quarter of an inch from the largest strength member. So my largest strength member ends about right here. So what I'm gonna do is open this tube about right here, about a quarter of an inch after the end of that strength member. Now, because this is gel filled cable, I'm gonna have to do it in segments. So I'm gonna start at the end I'm gonna go ahead and open this at segments, pull it off, and then I'm gonna clean my fibers. So I've got some already done. So let me grab one of those. Okay, so here is my flat drop cable with my 12 fibers cleaned and exposed from their buffer tube. I've got my strength members are a little bit shorter on this one than the one I just had. Um, and then I've got my buffer tube that's open about a quarter of an inch um, from the end of my strength member. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get this ready to be put in the closure. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my grommets. So here's one of the grommets. Um, so because this is a cut cable, um, the end has been cut by something other than myself or my company. Um, I can actually slide this grommet onto my cable. Uh, there's, you can also just slit it, which I find slitting is a little bit easier. So in order to slit this grommet, um, I'm gonna take a pair of snips here, and I'm just gonna slit it on the side. So I'm gonna slit it about right here. I'm gonna go all the way through the grommet. 
So I'm gonna take my snips, I'm gonna push it all the way through the grommet, and I'm just gonna snip it once, and it should create a nice, clean line there. So then I can go ahead and put this on my cable. So when I put this on my cable, um, I've got this, what we call the foot of the grommet, which is this feature right here, this little feature. Um, that's gonna go towards the outside of the closure. So I'm gonna have it face away from my exposed fiber. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. So now I can get ready to put this in the closure. So I'm gonna bring my closure over. So this is my prepared base. Um, so for today, I'm gonna have this be my incoming fiber. So this is where my first grommet is gonna go. My first cable is gonna go right here. So in order for me to put this grommet in with my cable, I'm gonna have to lubricate this grommet. So I've got my lubricant packet here. I'm gonna go ahead and open it. One thing to note, you just wanna make sure that you put it all over the outside surfaces of this grommet. You do not wanna get it in the slit line though. So you see how this is wide open because I slid it. What I'm gonna do is actually pinch the grommet together just to make sure I don't get any lubricant in there while I lubricate the outer surface. So I'm gonna start. You don't need a lot, you just need a little bit just to kinda make it easier to install the grommet with the cable. So then I'm gonna squeeze this slit together. And I'm just gonna use a little dab on the top, little dab on the bottom. So now that my grommet is shiny with lubricant, I'm gonna go ahead and install it. So I've got the foot of my grommet on the outside away from my fiber. So I'm just gonna press it into the closure base, just like that. Okay, so I've got my flat drop cable in the base. Um, my ground wants in the pocket. I just need to restrain the cable in the closure. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these um, retention clips, flat drop retention clips. Now where these go is in the slot right um, on the inside of the grommet pocket here. So they go about right here. Um, you're gonna do it so the tab is facing inside the closure. So something like this. Um, so typically what I like to do is make sure that I have enough cable sheath inside the closure for this to kind of grab onto to secure the cable. So I usually leave about a quarter of an inch to half an inch of cable sheath inside before I push this on. So what I'm gonna do is take my clip, line it up with the channel there. I'm gonna use my thumb to push this onto the cable jacket. Now, if you can't get it to go all the way down with your thumb, what you can use is a can wrench. You'll take the can wrench, whichever end, um, or a nut driver, and you'll basically set it on the tab, and you can use that to push it till it's fully seated in the channel. So that cable is not going anywhere. It's fully restrained. So before I add my additional cable, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just store this inside the closure just to kind of keep it from getting dirty or lubricant on it or what have you. So I'm just gonna take it and route it around the base here. Okay. So now that I've got that, I'm gonna go ahead and add an extra cable. Um, because this is a repair situation, I'm gonna have two cables. So here's this one. Now for this one, I did not slit this grommet just so you can kind of see the difference. So this grommet is not slit. It was pushed on before the cable's open. Um, but if you forget to do that, you can always slit it. Um, so now I need to determine where to install this. So I've got this open port here that I can put it in, or if my cable's running in line, I'd have to break open this tab with side cutters and put it in. Um, so for today, my cables are actually coming in the same side of the closure, so they're both gonna come in this side. It's what we call a butt application. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and install this cable right over here. So I'm gonna start by lubricating the grommet. Now, because I didn't slip this grommet, I don't have to worry about pinching it together to make sure I don't get lubricant inside the slit line. So once I've got it lubricated, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the grommet port. Once I've got that, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this drop out just a little bit because um, I only need about a quarter of an inch to half an inch inside the closure for the retention clip to snag onto this cable jacket. So I'm gonna take another retention clip. I'm gonna go ahead and install that. So I got that one with my thumb. And then at this point, um, what you would do is you would take your incoming and your outgoing fibers and you would go ahead and splice them in your splice blocks. So I'm just going to store those for right now. So you would run them to the splice trays or the splice blocks and splice them. So I've got one done already. So here's what it looks like once you are done repairing all of your splices. All 12 fibers have been spliced and put in the two eight count splice blocks. Um, the grommets have been lubricated. They do look a little bit dry. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more lubricant on them. Everything has been restrained here. Both drop cables have been. So before I go ahead and close this up and call this um, emergency repair application complete, I do have these two open grommet ports right at the top here. Now, because we didn't use them, we didn't break out the webbing here or the, the port, um, but we still need to put grommets and plugs in these two ports in order to get a proper seal. So I've got the two grommets that came in my kit. I've also got two plugs. So there's, they would be gray, um, yellow, or black plugs that come in the kit. So what I'm gonna do is put the plugs in the grommets. And then I'm going to lubricate the outer surface of the grommet. four sides. So once that that's lubricated, I can actually pop it in the empty ports. So because I don't have the port broken out, I'm going to put it so the plug is sticking out towards the inside of my closure. So it's going to go in just like that. I'm going to repeat on this side as well. So a little bit of lubricant. I'm going to put it in the port. Okay, so then I'm just going to double check to make sure that everything is good um, before I put the cover on. I've got four grommets here. I've got these two with cables coming out. And I've got these two with plugs. So if I need to add an extra cable, I can. I just, you know, take out the grommet and put the cable in, put it back in the closure. Um, so I'm going to grab the cover here and I just want to make sure that the lubricant that was pre-installed by the factory is still clean. There's no leaves in it, there's no debris, there's no broken fibers, it's just lubricant. Um, so it looks clean, it looks like everything is lubricated, so I'm going to go ahead and put it on. So it doesn't matter. So I've got this setting here, and I usually pick it up and I'll start with one corner. And you kind of just work your way around to kind of push it into place. So the grommets with cables are going to be a little bit more difficult to get those. So you'll hear a clicking noise, and then do another rotation. So now I just want to make sure that everything is 
fully closed. So the easiest way to do that is I'll actually turn the closure over. And you'll notice we have three latches on the side and two on the top and the bottom. So I just like to make sure that they're fully engaged um, prior to me, you know, putting this in the hole in the ground or where have you. So these are all fully engaged. So this closure is ready for deployment or, you know, ready to be um, thrown in a hole and covered in dirt. All right, so if you, if this um, DTC was used in an emergency repair application and you had to move these cables to either a different closure or a bigger closure because you were gonna add extra cables, um, the DTC is pretty easy to get back into. There are two ways to do it. Um, you can use a screwdriver and go in to each of these slots on the side here, put your screwdriver in and pry it open, or you can use the DTC opening tool. So basically it's got three prongs on one side. You'll stick it on the side and you'll just pry it open. Now if it gets stuck or you have to do it on um, both sides sometimes, so then you should be able to just take the cover off and you can check any of your splices or um, change out these grommets or you know, put these cables in a new closure. Now, when you go to reseal this closure, um, if you've gotten back in it, you just need to make sure that the cover still has lubricant on it and that the lubricant is still clean. So there's no dirt in it, there's no leaves in it, there's no um, broken fibers, and then you'll just go ahead and close it again. So um, this closure can be reused numerous times. You just have to make sure that the cover gasket um, is lubricated and your grommets are lubricated before you reuse it or re-enter it. And that completes the build for the Coyote DTC for flat drop repairs.